So for like the last two months, I've been stretching every day and the amount that it has improved how my body feels and also just my general muscle tone is um, obviously people who already practice good self-care, you knew that, but I was in denial and now I can't be any longer. So for those of you who have messed up bodies from riding, which I'm sure is a lot of you, Stretching actually helps. They were right. This is one of my favorite designs for my new graphic design release. It says equine science is the shit. Cause I am a nerd. You may have noticed that I wear headphones a lot more often in my videos. And this is because I've noticed that I get way more done when I'm listening to a podcast or an audiobook than I do when I'm just listening to the incessant chatter of my thoughts. So, yeah, it's kind of been a life hack for me to be a more productive person and not get stuck in executive dysfunction because I actually manage to complete tasks when I'm listening to something else. So just something to think about if you're also an adhd -er or an audi hd -er because it does work. It really does. We've had several dry days in a row now, which is super nice because it was raining so much and now everything's drying out. But the bumblebees are already coming back. Stuff's starting to bud. It feels like spring. A little bit early for that. That is beautiful Mount Baker in the background. Fun fact, when I was a child, I thought that was Mount Everest. So now sometimes I call it Mount Everest by accident. Not because I still think it is, but just because I thought it was for so long. Hello, ladies. Hello, lady girls. Lucy says I so fuzzy. I'm just a fuzzy girl. I'm just a fuzzy girl. Okay, I gotta go say hi to Milo, because he's the OG. Hi, mister. What's going on? Just having a little nippity nap? This is my son. You're my son. Okay. You can tell someone else laid down near him because there's flat marks and also right there. So this is the sacrifice area, which is why it has like no grass because they chew it up all winter. And then once it's more dry, we'll pull them off of it and then let, let it grow grass for the, for the summer. So I think I've finally figured out partially why Mesa and Juniper are so much different in terms of their level of confidence around people and just how easy it's been to gentle because Juniper's have been a lot easier to gentle than Mesa. Mesa's a lot more cautious and has taken a lot longer to come around consistently. And they are just two different types of personalities, but I think the thing with Mesa is that I think she was roped at some point because her reaction to like tack and lead ropes and whatnot was fearful as was juniper's because they were new things but hers was fearful in a way from like learned experience um so partly i think it's because she was in the holding pen for way longer than juniper like by a full extra year and then the other part i think is the fact that she might have been roped at some point because she was a lot more nervous of people having like any type of tool in their hand but especially ropes and it was in a way that didn't come across to me as just about it being like a novel stimulus. So I think it is because she's had a learned experience that was very unpleasant. Or even if she wasn't roped herself, maybe she saw other horses getting roped. Something along those lines because she's just much more distrusting of people, much more afraid of men, and just cautious of strangers in general. Whereas Juniper has been able to get used to it way quicker and just like, she's basically like a young domesticated horse now and not really 
any different anymore, but Mace is still very cautious. Like out of all of my horses, I think Mesa and Milo are the most similar. Like that's the horse that Mesa is the most similar to. And Milo is like notably traumatized. So I think it's a trauma response, a lot of her behavior. And it's smart, honestly. Like the fact that she has learned to be so cautious is a very smart thing. So she's a little survivor, but I think, I think she, I think she had a harder time than Junie B. Jones. But she's really started to come around. It just took her a long time because for the longest time, like anything we did with her, she was just like tolerating it. And anything we were training her, she's like going through the motions of what we asked just to get the food. So one thing that I definitively want to clarify is Mesa right here is like 1000% one of the Mustangs that if you just ignored her nervousness and just chucked a saddle on her, she would buck like an absolute heathen. Like she would go off like a dynamite. And I know that for a fact. So my goal in training her is to never have that happen. And if I make a mistake and it does, I'm going to be so upset with myself because I don't want to have her go off like that. Like I know she's fully capable of it. She's a horse that if you haltered her too fast, she would do that. If you tied her too fast, she would do something like that. She never has because I've avoided that specifically, but she is 100% a horse that would go from zero to 60 really fast because she is a survivor and she's a fighter. And she's the very type of horse that people would label as rank, despite the fact that she is a sweet, lovely, intelligent and sensitive young lady who's taking a dump right now. And they would call her rank when it's them that screwed up. It's not her because she's gonna be a super cool horse for someone that actually respects her autonomy and is there to be like a helping hand and a friend and a trusted person who can be a support person through that anxiety. She'll be amazing. But if people ignore that and set her off, she's going to be terrible. 